everyone. Today in this video, I'm going to be checking out the Eufy by Anchor X8 Hybrid Robot Vacuum Cleaner and Mop. I did receive this sample directly from Eufy, but I want you to know that any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this RoboVac or you want to find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. They walk you through some key tech specs and features on the side and the back. You'll notice front and center of our LiDAR navigation module. They're big on this twin turbine technology and the two-in-one vacuum and mop design. Now let's go ahead, let's open this up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature consisting of our owner's guide and manual, followed by a quick start guide, and we have our one-year warranty information. Next, you'll see we have our Eufy charger here, charging contacts, indicator light, Eufy's logo and branding, have our sensors there. On the bottom, you'll see our three grip feet and within the charging base, pop off this cover so you can plug in the included power supply, built-in cable management right there. I really like that design, super clever. Next, you'll see we have some zip ties for cable management. We have an extra side cleaning brush. We have some extra mop pads. These ones look more disposable. We have an extra filter. We have our mopping pad and tank right here with instructions, and this is how you're going to fill it up right there, and you can get the pad wet. We also have our waterproof charging base right here, too, if you want to use that, depending on your floor type. Here's the included power supply. And lastly, we have the vacuum. Let's go ahead, let's look at this in more detail. Looking at the top of the vacuum, you'll see our LiDAR navigation module here, Eufy's logo and branding with their twin turbine technology. Pretty cool pattern and design up at the top. We do have what feels like a little tempered glass top here. Three control buttons, Wi-Fi indicator light. Now let's look at it from the front. You'll see our sensor right there, navigational bumper. Pretty cool, got like that carbon fiber pattern and weave on it. You'll see our navigational bumper with the play and movement there. Rubber on the front bottom of that. Looks like we have some venting right here. Moving along to the back side, you'll see we have a removable dust bin. Here's some additional venting with that twin turbine technology again. Sensor on the side. Let's flip it around to the very bottom. You'll see one of our attached side cleaning brushes. So we do have that extra one included as well. Charging contacts, omnidirectional wheel, cliff sensor so it won't fall down the steps or anything like that. Eufy's contact information, additional RoboVac info right there. Two spring-loaded drive wheels, dynamic rolling brush, easy to remove, clean and replace as needed. With the bristle brush design with our agitator as well on there. And then you'll see right here at the bottom, we have our mop pad slide in as well as our dustbin. Let's look at the dustbin really quick. Here it is, ultra pack dust compression with the built-in cleaning tool here. So to easily detangle and clean as needed. And then we can open this up to empty and replace and clean the filter. You'll see what it looks like right there with everything removed. And it just snaps and slides right back in place. And for fun, let's take the mopping pad and tank right here. Let's just snap it right in place. You'll see very easy insulation. Press the two buttons on the side to release and clean as needed. Just follow the maintenance care and instructions right here on the top of the mop pad module. Now it's time to charge it up and try it out.
right, so we just finished our first clean and boy, oh boy, look at the results right here. This is a real world environment. Most of this, I believe, got picked up when we put this vacuum upstairs to clean. That space does not get vacuumed very often, as you'll see right here. So we kind of sped ahead, I guess, because typically you see this on your vacuums after they've been running for a couple of weeks or months if you don't maintain them. For us, though, with how dirty our second floor was, we got this after just one clean, believe it or not. So just make sure you're maintaining your vacuum. Typically on a unit like this with those brushes, they will hold the hair in as you see right here. So sometimes I do prefer the cleaning systems of let's say I robot with their dual brush system that doesn't have any actual bristles on their rollers. They don't get this tangled. So that's a give or take here, depending on the type of vacuum you're getting and what it's equipped with. But this is very typical. Usually though, I would say it takes, like I said, weeks to see results like this, not just one clean. So take that for what it is. Either that's reflective of the brush itself or just how dirty my house is. But again, what you see is what you get. Real world results right here. Side cleaning brush looks great. I thought for sure with all the tangles we had here that we'd see more hair wrapped around this brush, but nothing to report back. Mop pad looks great too. Can't even tell that we used it for mopping. Maybe a little bit of discoloration, but not bad. Also, we've used half the tank on our one clean. Now let's flip it over. I can't wait to show you guys the dustbin and all the contents that we have in here. This is going to be disgusting. Let's see if we can gently do this without making a big mess. Look at all of that hair, dirt, and dust packed in there. Definitely time to empty after one clean for us. Again, this was a main floor and an upstairs. Get a nice feel for, look at the really fine dirt and dust. It's able to collect that won't escape from your vacuum as well as the larger hair and crumbs. Pretty impressive stuff and it really packs it in there. And just for fun, let's peek on the inside. Looking in there, you'll see the roller with our hair still tangled on it, which is why, again, they give you a tool like this so you can cut all that hair away. With that first clean out of the way, I thought we'd briefly take a look at the Eufy app. So in this case, you'll see our RoboVac right here. We can enter into it. And we have our map that's been populated that we can edit as needed. You'll see we have a no-go zone already set up. This is what it's gonna look like with all of your control settings. We got the map front and center. We have our different cleaning options, auto room, zone, or spot. Pick and choose whatever one you want. You can adjust the suction settings right here and turn on or off boost IQ technology, depending on your floor type. We can quickly press the play button, have it start cleaning, or we can send it back home to recharge. Looking at the map, here are your features that you can change with it. We can manage the map. So if we select that, we have multi-saving turned on, first floor or upstairs, pick and choose which map you want to use. You'll also see we can edit room. So in this case, everything's just one room. So we could merge, divide, or rename. So you could set up kitchen, bathroom, family room. You get the idea there. Then looking further down, we have our no-go zones. So that's the red box there. We could put a virtual boundary up. Everything's just drag, drop, reposition, no mop zone. So maybe there's an area with a rug that you don't want to have a no mop zone area set. You can do that right there. So carpets, rugs, things like that. Maybe you know there's a special spot with tons of cords or shoelaces or things that your vacuum will get tangled up with. You can set those no-go zones right there within the app. So very simple to use. And then you'll see in the top right-hand corner, we have this settings icon giving us more device information. There's our map settings. Again, we can set this up with a schedule, tap and go settings. We can manually drive the RoboVac as needed. Here's our cleaning history. So you'll see the results here. Basically 500 and some square feet for the mopping tank got us about half of its usage. So about a thousand square feet, I'd say, is what you can expect realistically, depending on your environment with the mop tank without having to refill. But we can look and see where it cleaned row by row, how long it took. Here's the upstairs then you'll see same amount of time, but it took covered less area, more obstacles, things for it to drive and navigate. So your results will vary, but that's what you can expect with your cleans. We also have our sharing settings, share this with friends or family, do not disturb voice settings, unit settings. We can locate the robot if it gets lost. Accessory services, this is nice. You see the wear and tear on your brushes and filters so you know when it's time to change them out. Then we have our feedback, firmware updates, activity log, and then we can remove the device 
from our account. So very feature rich app for this vacuum. Everything that you would want here to control the map. I do wish with this particular unit though, that we had mop settings and adjustments to control water flow and things like that. But this one appears just to be a like self drip. There's no electronic control or anything that I can find. So how's this vacuum stack up against the competition? Well, we've compared it not only to Eufy's product lineup, but also to over 40 vacuums that we've had the privilege of testing. So first up, we're looking at max suction power. They advertise this vacuum at 2000 times two PA since it's got that twin turbine technology. So I'm not sure we're calling it 4,000. Technically it might be 2000 times two, but you'll see within Eufy's lineup, the average is about 2,600 PAs. And the average we've tested across all the vacuums we've ever reviewed, 3,600. Max CFM, we're showing a similar thing here as well. You'll see that compared to Eufy's lineup, this has some of the strongest CFM at 7.4 compared to 6.8. And that's also gonna be a above average of seven that we've seen across the board. Those first two metrics will help to explain our carpet deep cleaning score here, where we got a score of 85 out of 100. So about seven points above the brand average and right at the average across all the units that we've tested. In regards to decibels, I'd say this vacuum's still fairly quiet, even though you'll see it's louder than the average across Eufy's lineup and out of all the units we've tested, but there's really no noticeable difference for me when we're in a room with the vacuum running at 69 decibels versus 71, and that's at the max suction setting. So you can always turn it down and it'll be a lot quieter. So just keep that in mind, kind of a moot, point to make here. I would say if you got something like 16 below, well, that's actually gonna be super quiet on its max suction setting. That would be great and we'd celebrate that. Or if you got something like 80 decibels and beyond, we'd say, wow, that's way too loud. Something might be wrong. Moving right along to battery life. This is measured in minutes. They advertise 180 minutes of battery life compared to their brand average of 125. So it's great to see with their higher end vacuum you get that longer extended battery life. That's also about 40 minutes above the average that we've tested. Giving us that long battery life is our large battery capacity. This has a 5,200 milliamp hour battery capacity. That's about 2,000 milliamps more than the brand average. Now we got really powerful twin turbines, so that strong suction power as well as our advanced navigation, all playing into the fact that we're gonna need that larger battery. And you'll see it's about 2,000 uh, milliamp hours above the brand average as well. So Eufy's average overall and our average tested about the same. This is gonna be um, a larger battery capacity. That's also due to this having more premium features. We tend to see that in these vacuums, the very budget friendly ones, they're gonna have smaller batteries because you have to make compromises somewhere. Next in regards to height, this is very average with LiDAR navigation. They're all around that 3.8 inch range. This one has 3.9 inches for its height. The brand average is 3.1. That's brought lower because there's a lot of models from Eufy that don't have LiDAR. And across the board average tested, you're seeing 3.5. That skews lower too, because we cover a lot of iRobot vacuums that are lower in height because they also don't have LiDAR navigation. So you don't need to have that large sensor up at the top. In regards to bin capacity, you'll see we're right close to the average here at 400 milliliters, slightly below average for the brand and across the board. But in this case, you don't really want to see it much lower since this doesn't have a self-empty base. Typically in your self-empty base versions, you will see a smaller capacity dustbin where it's not as crucial to have a larger size since it's going to go back home and empty itself anyways. Since we don't have self-empty, you want that larger dustbin so you're making fewer trips to your trash can. In regards to water tank capacity, we have a 250 milliliter tank. That's well within the average that you're seeing compared to Eufy's own lineup, as well as all the vacuums that we've tested. Keep in mind the larger, the better here, because that means you're making less trips to your sink to refill the tank. Lastly, let's talk about cost. You'll see comparing this to the average Eufy product, we are in their premium price range for the features that we're getting. And we have one of their higher end models, but compared to the average of all the units tested, we're still coming in very aggressive in regards to price. So you'll see that throughout all of these metrics, we've either got at the average, maybe above average, maybe slightly below average, but you'll notice with our cost, we're below average. So it's great to see that we're competing with higher end vacuums 
in regards to performance, coming really close, maybe surpassing them a little bit, but staying well within that range, but we're not costing as much. So after using this vacuum, now let me share with you my final thoughts. First thing I wanna say is Eufy has come a long way in their technology and their vacuum models. They seem to be rapidly innovating, catching up to the market, maybe even surpassing them in some areas while still offering you a great value. LiDAR navigation is a must today. You definitely want to get a unit with that so you can get advanced mapping. You can set the no-go zones, all of that. Highly recommend you have a much more enjoyable experience. I wouldn't say this is the smartest vacuum that has LiDAR, but I would say for most of you, it's good enough, especially for what you're paying for this particular vacuum. I do wish that they had advanced AI in the front with cameras so we could use this as a security device as well as to identify obstacles and things like that to make it avoid them power cord, shoelaces, you get the idea, pet waste. But with this vacuum, for what you're paying, it's hard to really knock it a bunch of points for that. I wish that this did come with a self-empty base that would make it much more versatile and useful. And I feel like the mop is lacking. Most of the time when you have this just drip gravity fed system, they're equivalent to basically just a damp paper towel being wiped across your floor. It's better than nothing. And it's great to basically maintain your floors in their current condition. But for some reason, this mop pad just seems to get really dry really quick. So you'll wet it down yourself, but it doesn't feel and seem like it's really doing a good job saturating the pad on its own once that initial wetness starts to wear off. So I'd like to see that improved in the future. They need to make it more electronic control where you can actually adjust the drip. That might increase the price, but a lot of other models have that. So you can increase the drip so you can make sure that it's getting wet enough to actually make a difference with your floors.